Hello everyone. Here I'm going to talk about a chain rule. This one is a supplemental material for this lecture A. I did not explain well in the class, so now I actually make up for it. So chain rule, chain rule. Okay. First, we know about the curling. Curling is to make function using partial parameters. We call it curling, and we already show you several uh, function factory to generate functions. Here we talk about chaining rule. So chaining rule is you want to actually run the function and then get another function. So basically, chaining rule is a factory function factory. You can use parameter to generate a function, and that function can call another function and call another function and call another function. Now we call it chain rule. Key point is that return function must be recursive. Must be recursive. So I missed that. Okay, previous example that I gave, they are not, they are not, they are just too currying. They just providing partial result to it. But the function that we get is not recursive call. It's not the function itself. It's not recursive call. So let's look at the, this is a chain in duo, uh, for the recursive call. So let's look at it. Okay. So basically here I have an F function. So this F function, you will generate a G function. This G function, if this G function don't have parameters, say this uh, actually, uh, you do add and one, and there is no parameter, you finish. This one, you will generate a G function and G function will add uh, X is not defined, X is not defined, undefined, so you will return earn you basically return uh actually uh one okay if you do this parenthesis and then no data this one will return a value that's one okay so if you do either and then one without parenthesis then you return a function called add uh uh n plus one so it actually will recursively call in one plus x depend on x of the value that given by the flowing data here. So this x will be used for it. Okay, and that will generate a function. So basically, uh, this one will have two case. If the trading no parameter, you return the value. Uh, or if you actually, so you may provide vector as the output, it may also provide function call as the output. And if it provide out function call as the output, that would be a recursive call. Okay, let's look at the next example. So you say function one equal eight one. This one will return a function that actually is the eight one to x. Okay, that's a f function, and this will be one function if you return this way. If you put this way and then put parentheses, then the x is undefined. X is undefined. So this one actually will give you the value of one. This one will give you the value of three. Okay, this is the chain rule. So let's actually look at how this chain rule work in our uh, JavaScript. So here I do have a function called chain.html. It's in the same old, uh, it's in the same directory that we had. So it's either n and then g x if x is undefined, you don't do it. So here we use add n this one to generate a uh either one function. This is a function. You take x, it will be giving you x plus one. So here either one plus uh put in the two list is x. So you begin one plus two function and you evaluate with uh value so this one actually will get a value x so this x is actually three and then in the next one you have the either either is a uh, eight with one and no value no value you return one so you get one and this one you get add five four three two one this one and evaluate it okay not add that with a function so when you do parenthesis nothing that will give you value when you put parenthesis still with some value that will give you a recursive call function. Okay, and this one, you, you change up this value 
and then and then you get uh, 15. So this one is easy save and then try and change rule. Wrong. Okay, you get 15 on that. Okay. Thank you. Bye now. This is supplemental material for Chen Luo. Bye bye.